Hello, my name is Richard. Um, today I wanted to share a personal testimony of mine that happened to me in April of 2010. Um, this is how I was saved by Jesus. So to begin with, um, I came down from Edinburgh to London um, a week before Easter. Um, my mum worked at college as a support teacher and she was working with um, a friend of hers um, and she is a pastor. Um, her name is Anne. Uh, she heard about my struggles while I was in Edinburgh, um, my relationship with my dad, problems at work, um, and she said that if you ever come down, we would like to meet, you know, take you out for a meal, talk about your problems. I said, yeah, absolutely. You know, I'll, I'm coming down at Easter. You know, I'd love to come in and you know meet up somewhere. So um, Easter was on the Sunday. So during that week, while I was at my parents' house, um, I wasn't really sleeping all that well. Uh, for some reason, you know, I kept waking up every other hour. It was really strange because normally I would sleep straight through. I'll get up at eight, nine o'clock, sometimes ten. Um, but yeah, I, did, that week was just, it was just awful. It was just like something was bothering me or something was keeping me awake. Um, and it was that Saturday morning I woke up and it was around eight o'clock. Um, and it was late on that evening I was going to meet Pastor Anne f just for a light meal. Um, I woke up at eight and then I decided, well, I, you know, I want to go back to sleep. I haven't been sleeping properly. I've been waking up, you know, every other hour or whenever. Um, and then as I went back to sleep, it was almost like a transition. I knew someone was pulling me through and I didn't know at the time what was going on. Uh, and then I started to slow down and what I saw was this very, very strange but dark looking planet. And it was very dark, black, like rusty looking. And I was like, okay, where did this come from? And I was like, well, what's going on? Why? Why? Now, suddenly now I'm being pulled towards this planet, you know, slowly, and I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, I don't want to go near that. It looks doesn't look very good. It looks very creepy. Um, and as I get closer and closer, the surface of this planet started to become more clearer, uh, you know, and it was like, it was it was like on fire, red, red hot, rusty looking planet. Um, it wasn't like the sun as you know, tremendous heat, but it was like you can tell like it, it had the surface and it was like lava and uh, filling this whole planet but with a lot of dark surfaces and as I got closer and closer then I could see that all around the crust of this planet were huge like volcano volcano mountains that were kind of kind of poking out of the crust uh, and on top of these volcanic mountains it looked appeared to look like like black figures uh, like like dark ash but like smeared like a sketch but it was like of this person figures of men or women and they had their arms like waving up like this and stretching out towards the sky and I was like okay I know where I'm going this is hell there's no way this is you know some random planet that is scary or some nightmare dream of I'm having it this is hell I know it's hell I can tell by that I didn't want to even go here. I, I, I felt like my spirit was like, no, I don't want to go here. Let's, let's go back. I want to go back the other way, but I couldn't move. I was being pulled towards this place and lava just suddenly spewed out and it, it con completely consumed these people or these black figures trying to escape the fire, but they couldn't. They were just stuck there and there was nothing that they could, there was nothing they could do. They were just stuck and the fire and the lava was spewing out on this mountain consuming them and I was like no this is hell I, I don't know why I'm going here I shouldn't be here I should be or I shouldn't even be here why am I here I kept saying to myself and I think this was God pulling me into this place and it took me a while to realize that but then as I it became clear where I was going and that this was hell I knew very well that this God sent me here uh, and as I got closer into the atmosphere of the planet the planet was just like a, it, it was like a black lake completely black I couldn't see any light anywhere it was just black black lake of fire and the lake was lit up by the lava which was spewing in the background and the reflection cast light on this black lake and that's how I could tell 
before the lava came about in the background I couldn't see anything but then as lava appeared the light from that fiery red orange just lit up the lake and I could see it that this was hell and God was slowly gradually pulling me down in towards the surface but then in the surface just shortly after the fire appeared in the background there was these winged black demons creatures flying in the air and I remember there were three of them three you know spread out but they were so big and they were on, they were on fire their whole wings their wings and their whole body were just burning with fire flying towards me I couldn't see them very clearly but it was close enough that I could tell that these were winged creatures um, but I thought they were like demons flying and probably the most horrific sounds you would ever ever hear were the screams of thousands and thousands and I don't even know millions of people screaming out in agony and pain shouting screeching wailing it was it was surreal I there is nothing you would ever hear whether it's in movies whether it's an, an accident a car accident whether it's people running for their lives whether it's a building collapse whatever this scream and wailing is just I, I you know I can still hear I can still hear these screams in my head and this one woman she had this un, you know she had this wailing of that was just so recognizable that I could even mimic every everything that just the way she screamed I can mimic that in my head and I can hear her now I can just repeat that over and over and this is a reminder of what happens when you're in hell that's probably why I can still remember it and obviously because it's nothing I would ever hear in in this in this life in this world right now and God suddenly was bringing me down towards the surface the surface was scattered with these rusty looking kind of rock rock faces of cliff or rock cliffs but just scattered islands around this lake and this is when God was bringing me down onto these rocky surfaces and the moment my feet touched the ground the first thing that I said to myself out loud was that no matter what happens I love God and I will fight my way out of this and from that moment on I was just trapped on this little island nowhere to run nowhere to hide running around couldn't escape anywhere there was there was just there was nothing I could do uh, I heard again screams people of people um, and then suddenly the, there was these horrible horrible uh, creatures and uh, I don't know what they were bugs insects just horrible things that were just coming up from them um, from the ground and everyone that was there with me on this little island was getting attacked and I couldn't do anything I was running around nowhere to go um, suddenly I saw lava lava worms um, coming up from under the ground they were coming up taking people grabbing them pulling them back down under the to, under the surface of this island through the soil through the rock um, and they were just so big they were just it, it just like this big the massive one came up opened its mouth horrible teeth very slimy looking uh, it was just like a big just a giant maggot really that's what they look like it was just horrible and it came up opened its mouth and the pure weight of this lava worm was just it was just so overpowering that it kind of crushed on my chest as I was standing up I couldn't fight I was trying to grab it I was trying to pull it off me I couldn't do anything it was just so heavy I mean I did stop it from trying to grab me with its teeth but then it, another little mouth another jaw came out and started to come at me and started chewing at my chest and then I had scorpions also stinging at me in my legs and my ankles but but for this experience it seems that God wanted me to, to see hell and to see it firsthand with my own eyes and hear the sounds and you have to believe in Christ that he died for you and he rose again to save us from our sins short time that I was in hell so shortly after that I, I woke up and it was after half past ten it wasn't like an hour and a half of, of uh, I slept for um, 
and I felt terrible. I felt like my spiritual being was just ripped out of my body. I was just a dead human flesh, just sitting there with just hollow. There's just nothing there whatsoever. You know when your soul is just torn out of your body, when you just feel lifeless. You feel, well, why am I even alive? I should be dead. And that's basically what happened. I was sent there to die in my sins. So my spirit was sent there to die in my sins. And, you know, at that time I wasn't sure what, what, what to do. I was just looking through the wall. And I just looked at the wall, you know, with a blank stare. It's just, what do I do now? Like, I feel, feel what's the point? I, you know, I'm dead. I'm basically dead. I've been to hell. I've experienced it. And I've come back. And I don't feel any... Don't feel anything. I feel like my my life is just gone. Um, my mum came back that morning, so you know I shared my experience or my my dream with her. Told her what happened, and she said, "No, no, no, you, you know, you no. There's no way you would be dreaming of hell. No, you're too good. You've done everything right. Why would you be going there? No, 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 no." But I knew that wasn't the right way to approach it because at the end of the day, God is the one that judges. So that evening. I met with my pastor Anne, um, we had dinner, I said, look Anne, I've had this vision of hell, and I told her about what happened, and she said, no, 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 Richard, you had this vision of hell because you, because God wanted you to share this with other people, God has chosen you to share your story, your experience, what God has shown you in hell, that it exists, that it's real. And you have to warn people, whether they're Christians or non-Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, monks, whatever, they need to know that hell is real. And the only way to avoid going to hell is to believe Jesus and believe that he died for you and for your sins. And as we were just, we were just talking for an hour, an hour or so about my life, problems in the past, depression, anxiety, problems with my parents um, and then she then said to me Richard have you ever confessed that Jesus is your Lord and Saviour I said no I've never done that I mean least I do believe in him I do believe in God I go to church I sing I used to sing in the choir but no I've never actually confessed with my own mouth that you know he's Lord so she said okay what I want to do she said is we're gonna say a prayer and I just want you to repeat everything that I say. I said, okay, that's fine. So then she started to say the prayer of salvation, which is you confess with your own lips that Jesus is Lord, that he died for you, your sins, that you have to confess you're a sinner and that God raised him from the dead. Um, I didn't know the prayer at all, but I followed Anne and I you know, recited every word that she said. So she started saying this prayer. She said, dear Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner. I started to repeat those words. Within a few seconds, I just couldn't control my my facial expression. Like my, it was almost like this heat wave was flowing from my bottom of my toes or my feet all the way up to my head, and this heat was just so immense that it, you know I, it was it was almost like something was happening to me and I couldn't do anything about it, and this heat became to become a, a force which pushed on my cheeks and my mouth and it started to make it, it, you know it started to force me to make this evil grin this sinister looking smirk at my pastor um pastor Anne and you know I was looking at her like this I was like like this evil sinister look and I knew what I was doing and I there was nothing I could do I couldn't control myself I couldn't stop uh, you know I, I couldn't stop what was happening I stopped repeating the, the, the prayer, the words of the prayer, and I said, no, I've got to stop doing this, this, I sh this is wrong, this is, this is really rude, I shouldn't be, should be looking at her like this. So the first thing I did was I grabbed my hands, and I pushed down on my cheeks like this, and I pushed down on my mouth, and I kind of squashed my face in, and, and did all this, you know, movement, just, just to kind of get whatever was happening to me to stop. Then. I was okay and I said sorry Anne okay let's I'll carry on carried on with the prayer and the heat got intensified but it was stable uh, and then towards the end of the prayer we were about to confess that you know 
Jesus rose, you know, God rose Jesus from the dead, and I believe in him, uh, and obviously finishing off the prayer with Amen, then the heat exploded like a furnace in my body. I knew very well that I had a very evil, 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 evil spiritual demon in me, a manifestation as some people, as some Christians or pastors call them, but there, yes, it was a manifestation of this evil spirit, evil demon that was in me, and he burst out, and all I, I didn't have any control, I just f knew what, what I was doing, but there was nothing I could do, it, it, it was torturing the fact that I was accepting Christ as my saviour, and this manifestation in, in me that was attached to my soul in here, was lashing out as, as as a desperate attempt to stop from from this ever happen from me being saved by Christ by accepting Christ as my savior and I was my body this demon was just using my arms to you know lash out it, it then put it my hands over my face like this and I was just screaming and wailing and I was doing this swaying from back to side I was screaming out, no, I can't do this, I can't do this, stop, stop, please stop, I can't do this, I can't do this. And Anne, my pastor Anne, grabbed her hands and she banged on the table loudly and she said, Richard, you must finish it, you must finish the prayer, finish it now, finish it now. And I had enough strength to, to, to finish the last few words and I said, Amen. And then this force just, ex just exploded out of my body and I was completely drained of energy. I was exhausted. It was just an unreal experience. I've, you know, I knew very well that I had this demon in me, and the moment I accepted Jesus, it just, it just, it just went, and I was saved. That moment, I was saved. My, my whole salvation, my whole spirit was saved, and my name was written in the book of life. Um, and my pastor was just screaming in joy, praising God, and it was just, I mean, at the time I couldn't praise God because I was just so exhausted, I was almost collapsed on the table, we were at, having dinner, and we were in this little restaurant, and there was loads of people around us, so I can't imagine what they must have thought, seeing me carry on like some crazy person, but I know very well that it wasn't me acting out like this, this was a pure evil spirit in me, and I can tell you now for sure why, I know that this was a demon in me. Many years ago, I remember my grandmother saying to me, you know, that I had this evil spirit in me because I would always talk back. I would always be rude. And she was a very, very devoted Christian. Read her, she would always read her Bible every day. And I remember her telling me not to argue back at her, whether you're right or wrong, but I did something wrong. And I was standing up for myself trying to say, no, it wasn't my fault, it wasn't my fault. And I used to argue back at her and be very rude and, and disrespectful. And I know she did say to me, Richard, there's an evil spirit in you, you must be silent. You don't argue back, I don't care if you're right or wrong. You don't argue back at me. And I did remember several years, several, several years later, I did have an experience where I did know that there was something in me, something evil, but I couldn't work out what it was. At the time I know now what it was, but I, I, back then I didn't. But I, I knew there was some evil spirit kind of attached to me in here somewhere. And I remember I was desperately trying to, to, to get it out and I didn't know what to do. And I would kind of make myself get angry and I would be angry at this entity that was in me. and I would kind of say, I'm going to get you out of me, you're not going to stay here, I don't want you, get lost, you know, get away from me, and I'll, I'll drive you out, I'll force you out, and as I kept doing that, I knew it was getting angry, it was, it was getting f furious, because again, I felt that same heat, same aggression, same, uh, you know, that, it was just, I, I remember feeling that same experience I felt when I was saved at, in front of my pastor, the same kind of body experience so so yes I've I, I've been I've I'm saved I've given my life to Christ there's so many things so many great things he's done for me I can't obviously go into it now but you know it, it's unbelievable that he's just turned my life around and every every year every day I'm learning I'm changing my spiritual growth 
is constantly changing and it's moving in ways God's Spirit has made me see things in this world which others dismiss as a lot of rubbish or it's not true or we live in a fantasy world or God doesn't exist but he, he, it's almost like you know Jesus has removed the cloud from my eyes and made me see what this world really is and who is running it and who is running it is the devil and he's fallen angels and I've seen a lot in this life since I've been saved for the past few years than I probably would have ever in my whole life if I've never was saved um, and yes God is continually growing in my life Con you know I always give thanks for what he's done for me and for all the good things he's done and continues to do for me and um, so that's why I wanted to share this video and this testimony with you I have to do this not only for God but I have to do it because Jesus died on the cross and bled for our sins whether you believe him or not he died for us and if you want to be saved from our own doom we have to accept Christ you know we all have our own uh, mission and our own objectives that God wants us to fulfill we're all part of the same tree and we all grow in different ways but we're all connected and so yeah so that's basically just from what I've learned since I've been saved you know it, it's trying to do everything I can for God and to try and show people that you know don't wait till the last minute to say you're sorry that's what I want to leave this video with my message is that don't wait till the last minute to accept Christ um, there's a, a link at the bottom of the description of my website where I have many 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 other stories many other testimonies and experiences it doesn't just end with the vision of hell and how I was saved. It, there's so many amazing things, and and you know that's happened to me since since I was saved in 2010. So, uh, but thank you very much for listening, and um, God bless to you all, um, and take care.